In this video I will show you the most important and best GoPro accessories and mounts. I will show you what you can use the individual mounts for and what experiences I've made with them personally. I will tell you which mounts and accessories I personally find useful and which I don't. And of course I will show you many sample shots. For all accessories you will see in this video I will put links in the video description. And in case you are new here, my name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps and this channel is about filmmaking tutorials, GoPro and reviews of other consumer cameras. Consider subscribing if you are interested in these topics and have fun with this video. Before I begin, I just want to clarify a few things. It is obvious that everyone has different needs and practices different sports. Therefore, a mount that I personally find useful might not be useful for you and vice versa. Also, for most mounts and accessories there are cheaper and more expensive versions. Often the cheap version is sufficient for the respective purpose, but in some cases it may be advisable to buy the original or at least a high quality version. I will tell you with which accessories this is the case in my eyes. So let's not waste any more time, there are a lot of things to talk about. Let's start with a few simple but very important accessories, the micro SD card and an additional battery. As for the SD card, you just have to make sure that it's a sufficiently fast card, especially if you want to shoot videos in 4K. There is a list of compatible and tested SD cards available from GoPro. Personally, I've been using SD cards from SanDisk for years. Either the SanDisk Extreme, which is a bit cheaper, or the slightly faster Extreme Pro. I've had very good experiences with these cards so far, but I'm convinced that fast cards from other manufacturers work similarly well. As for the extra batteries, however, you should be careful when buying them. I bought these extra batteries from Smartree some time ago, along with a charger. It is true that the batteries do work, however, especially in the cold when skiing, there have always been situations where the recording was interrupted. Therefore, I can only recommend them with restrictions. According to GoPro, the battery has also been modified for the GoPro Hero 8. The newer batteries have this blue base. According to GoPro, older batteries should lead to restrictions when used with the Hero 8, for example, if you want to use the boost mode. Therefore, pay attention to the compatibility if you buy additional batteries for the Hero 8. If you often want to take longer time-lapse shots, I would also recommend a power bank. A power bank has also worked wonders in the cold and quickly brought a seemingly dead battery back to life. Another necessary accessory, especially for the Hero 8, is in my opinion a protective case. Since the Hero 8 no longer has a frame, it has become much more vulnerable when dropped. It very quickly gets scratched and the LCD screen also breaks easily. I've been using this case from the yard for some time now and it comes with a couple of screen protectors. There is already a detailed video on my channel about this topic. Another accessory that should not be missing in any collection is a thumb screw wrench. Unfortunately, it happens again and again that the screws of the GoPro mounts are very difficult to open. Whether it is because of the cold or the humidity, it is annoying when you are on the move and are hardly able to open the screws to change the mount. You can also use this tool to tighten the GoPro screws if necessary to prevent wobbling. A general accessory that can also be very useful is this connector between a GoPro mount and a tripod thread. This allows you to use the various GoPro mounts for smaller cameras or in combination with a smartphone holder with your smartphone. This can be very useful under certain circumstances. Before we come to the different mounts, I would like to talk about GoPro's media mod. GoPro introduced a media mod for the Hero 8 a few months ago. This media mod contains an additional shotgun microphone, a 3.5 audio inject for microphones, a micro HDMI port and a USB connection. You can also buy a display and a light, which can be connected to the media mod. The media mod is especially interesting if you want to use the GoPro frequently for vlogging. Especially the possibility to connect any external microphone is interesting. Since I personally hardly use the GoPro for vlogging, these accessories were not of interest for me. But this is something only everyone can decide for himself. So let's come to the most important part of this video, the mounts. One of the most frequently used GoPro mounts is the simple helmet mount. This mount has a few advantages and disadvantages. The biggest advantage is that all necessary accessories are included in every GoPro package and you don't have to buy anything. It is also easy and quick to mount. Personally, I am not a big fan of this mount. Apart from the fact that additional weight on the head can be uncomfortable, the helmet mount does not create an optimal viewing angle due to the high position. 
This becomes apparent when cycling or skiing, for example. It is difficult to get both the slope and the horizon in the same frame. I find a helmet side mount more interesting. Because the helmet itself is partly in the frame, you can take interesting shots with it. Not necessarily as a primary mount, but to give your videos a little more variety. For the side mount, you need a few accessories. I use these small arms to build the helmet side mount by myself. Like many of the mounts I show you today, these small arms are included in most cheap mount kits. I will find a link to a kit that contains the most important mounts presented today. Another interesting addition to the helmet mount is this helmet extension arm. With this you can take interesting and cool shots of your face. I would not use this mount as a primary mount as well, but also to give your videos a little more variety. If you attach your GoPro to the helmet mount or any other mount with a mounting buckle, you might want to make sure to use the original mounting buckle. It has this rubber lip that provides more stability. There are helmets where you may not want to attach an adhesive mount or where this may not be possible. In these cases you could for example use this head strap. You can put it over the helmet and therefore you don't have to attach any adhesive mount to the helmet. Of course this is not possible with all helmets, but only up to a certain size. As the name suggests, the head strap is also suitable for attaching it directly to the head. When the GoPro is attached with the head strap, it is located approximately at forehead height, and the recording angle is slightly better than with a typical helmet mount. Thus, good POV shots can be taken. Personally, I do not find it very pleasant to use the GoPro directly on the head with a head strap. Therefore, I recommend to wear at least a cap. I have only used the head strap for a few times when climbing, and even there, it didn't work out very well. The rock is just too close for this kind of shot when climbing. For vented helmets, for example those used for biking, there is also a separate strap mount. Since I prefer a chest mount when cycling, I have never used one of these before. And with that we have already come to one of my favorite mounts, the chest mount. The chest mount has a few decisive advantages for me, especially if you compare it to the helmet mount. It leads to shots from a slightly lower angle. This way, for example, when skiing, you can get the slope and at the same time the horizon in the same frame. The angle is much better than with the helmet mount. Another advantage of the chest mount is that you hardly feel it when you wear it, so it does not disturb you in any way. These advantages apply not only when skiing, but also when biking, for example. Also when biking, the chest mount leads to an ideal viewing angle. You can see the handlebars and parts of your arms, but at the same time you can see the trail and the horizon. This gives the shot much more depth. The GoPro is best attached to the chest mount with a J-hook buckle mount. This way you can adjust the angle better. I've been using a cheap chest mount from a kit for several years and I'm completely satisfied with it. Especially when it comes to biking, such a handlebar mount is also a good choice. The size is adjustable, so you can mount it on bars of different width. The chest mount may be the better solution for POV shots, but the handlebar mount can be suitable for filming yourself while biking. You can also mount it on other parts of the bike or of course on a pole. Unlike the chest mount, the quality of the handlebar mount of the kit is rather average. If you only need it rarely, it is good enough, but if you want to use it often, I would rather use a high quality product. If you want to capture yourself in various activities, such as skating, skydiving, where it is not practical to use a pole or a hand grip, a hand and wrist strap may be a good choice. I can show you two versions of it, a rather simple version with a plastic base and a more sophisticated version with a large velcro strap, where you can turn the camera to get the best angle. Especially the quality of this second version, which also comes with a kit, is in my opinion sufficient for sporadic use. And since we are talking about how to capture yourself, let's take a look at one of the most important GoPro mounts, the pole. The pole is definitely one of the most useful GoPro accessories. It's the perfect mount for travel videos, vlogging and also for capturing yourself during various activities such as skiing or snowboarding. A pole is therefore your best choice when you are forced to film yourself. I can tell you right away that these thin aluminum poles which are included in the kits are useless and break immediately. You should therefore purchase a pole separately. When it comes to choose the right pole, everyone has his own needs. It was always important to me that the poles are very short when retracted, so that I can store them in the jacket pocket. When extended, it should be relatively long, so that I can get completely into the frame when skiing for example, or capture enough of the environment when shooting travel videos. I've been using these relatively cheap poles for several years now. Although it is relatively solid, it does not last forever, as you can see here. The length can be adjusted flexibly and the twist lock mechanism is easy to use. 
I've also used it in water, but I guess it is not really waterproof. In the water, I would also rather use a hand grip, of course a floating hand grip. This has not the range of a pole, but is much better suited for diving and snorkeling, especially because it is much more handy. The kits usually contain such a yellow hand grip. It floats and is easy to spot in the water due to its bright yellow color. For my purposes, this is completely sufficient. From GoPro itself, there is still a high quality version, but since I live in the mountains myself, I never had the need to buy one. There are many different versions and combinations of poles and hand grips. Maybe the free way grip from GoPro is also interesting and it can also be used as a tripod. When it comes to tripods and no mount collection should be without one, I would like to recommend Joby's products. Such Joby Gorilla Pods come in different sizes, you can attach them almost anywhere and they are relatively rugged. When folded, you can also use them as hand grips or as mini poles. Depending on the version, you can also adjust the head to get the perfect shooting angle. But basically, you can use any type of tripod with a GoPro. All you need is this tripod mount adapter, which is also included in most mount kits. Many mount kits also include mini tripods. I am not convinced of their durability as you can see in this example. A good and robust tripod is definitely worth it, especially if you, like me, also like to take time-lapse recordings. A mount that can also be useful in different situations is a suction cup mount. It is especially well suited to attach the GoPro to a car. This mount here is also from a kit and it serves its purpose. But you should not rely too much on its suction effect. I would therefore recommend that you secure the GoPro in some way when using this mount. If you often want to take shots attaching the GoPro to a car, I would recommend an original mount or a higher quality version. A mount that is also included in most kits is a clip mount, that is intended for attaching the GoPro to backpacks, for example when taking shots while hiking. I must admit that I have hardly used this mount until now. I think that with this mount I have shown you the most important mounts and accessories. It is clearly not possible to go into all existing accessories. For example, there would be different filters. But this is a more complex topic that might be the subject of another video. And that's it for today. If this video was interesting or helpful for you, give me a like as feedback and see you next time.